Da, 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 da. First things first, anytime you get a new piece of hardware that previously used by someone else, you gotta see what they put on the computer. It, this isn't a Titan though, it's a Dominator. Not that attitude. File Explorer, pictures, there we go. Now, ooh, look at this. Why it's is that someone's 3D rendered room. <laughs> Why yeah, is there yeah. 3D rendered stuff on here? Because, well, you know, 3D people need places to live too, Justin. You can't be racist. Make test battle, just an educational enough. I'm Justin, and today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, we've got a review of a laptop. We've been sent a lot of different stuff re to review before, like Nerf blasters, 3D printed parts, a cheap Chinese uh, 3D printer that caught fire on stream. Whoa! Uh, that went pop. But yeah, nothing quite like this. For full disclosure, we were sent this by MSI Australia for a limited time just to review it. And the way this all came about is they saw our vlog at the NVIDIA NFAN meetup at the end of last year. And they liked it and said, hey, would you like to review a laptop? Okay. <laughs> so the laptop we have here is the GT72 VR Dominator. Do it, Alex. Doing it. I'm doing it well. Mm. Your new professional career is like a professional tech unboxer. Are we doing it right? I don't know. Are we charismatic enough? <sighs> Build quality. It is a nicely built laptop. It's got the matte black and shiny black aesthetic like a lot do. It's a, it's a quite a heavy laptop. We saw all three of their models. They had the Stealth, the Dominator, and the Titan. And the Stealth we really liked. It yeah. was so Stealth small. Yeah, Stealth 1060. This thing is, it does look like a gaming laptop. Yeah, you would need a backpack for this. This is, it's a little heavy. It's a little heavy. Look at that venting. Look at the vents. Four USB slots. Very nice for a laptop. SD card. All the audio ports. The other side, an extra port and a CD. Wait, an optical drive? Yeah, optical Dang. drive. Old school. And on the front, there's a floppy drive. Okay, money shot, people. Don't swear. Money. Notably with a 1920 1080 display that does 120 hertz. Actually using the keyboard itself is actually quite nice. Look at that, look at that, look at that, I'm gonna push the button. Oh man. How, how does it feel? Oh, buttony. Not it's clicky. Not, it's yeah. not mechanical. We know that, and it's obvious, but uh, that's not it's too bad. It's a nice for... press. I'm not gonna lie, that's a nice press. It's very serviceable. I used it for three weeks and quite liked it. RGB LEDs underneath the keyboard. However, this isn't individually key lit LEDs. It's three main sections, so you can't change all the individual colors. What are these? What are those? This has eye tracking. Eye tracking? Eye tracking. Why? Because you gotta track the eyes. Sadly, I can't play this with sunglasses. I don't know much about this Toby eye tracking, so these seem to be IR um, lights to make sure that you're fully illuminated, and there must be little webcam cameras to track your face. So mm. this will be, this will be interesting. Oh, it, says, it says on the box, it's the first one with it, so no one knows about it, and it will be very, very interesting. It's a pro gaming category laptop with a 6700HQ processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD, and a terabyte of hard drive. Full 1070, not a 1070M full blown graphics card, and also PCIe. Yes. PCIe SSD. It's the yeah. way to go. Everything else is just for filthy casuals. <laughs> Our review copy has come with this big ass brick. How many watts is that? A lot. 19.5 volts, 11.8 amps output. <laughs> just do it. Stop making it dramatic. Just push it on. You can't, you can't just push it on. Just do it. I did. Ooh. Ooh. So there's a 3D rendered bed, another 3D rendered bed, another 3D rendered bed. <laughs> the virtual life is grand. Yeah, this is like Second Life 3D. Okay, what else do we got? Java setup, why would you do that? Ugh. And bye Java. Computer, 100% better now. Runs at least 30% faster, 50% of the time. That doesn't make sense. 
After you looked at people's pictures, next thing you do is make Windows 10 better. How do you make Windows 10 better? You get rid of all these tiles. Unpin from start, unpin from start, unpin from start. Give me a montage. Because no one likes tiles, Windows. No one likes tiles. And notice there's no easier way of doing this. You have to individually click each and every single one. Now, you have something a little bit more manageable. We'll have to uh, pin a few different things here, but we got rid of the pes pesky tiles, so now we're at least 300% better. For those keeping track at home, we are now 330% better 80% of the time. Hackerman. The GT72 VR also comes thumping with a pretty decent speaker for a laptop speaker, comparable or unnoticeable compared to, say, a cheap kind of get by set of computer desktop speakers. A decent clarity, it sounded good. However, there was one massive problem. Upon our first boot up, they worked flawlessly. They were fine. The second time, however, we were getting massive static and distortion coming from them. And after a lot of research online, pinpointed the cause a program uh, that was pre-installed that was causing all the issues, which is a after driver sound program that's supposed to optimize, I guess, sound performance or something. And the only way to deal with the situation was we had to go into Task Manager and actually close the program down. If we own the laptop, we just uninstall it because it was a little bit annoying every time we booted up, we had to open up Task Manager to close that program because it was the only way to close it. Another audio problem I had is it was all staticky and only coming through the right speaker. You may have seen this before on other laptops and that's just a problem with the driver Realtek. Sometimes with some of the updates they screw up. Upon booting up one time we received an update and it messed with the audio and that was simply resolved by rolling back the update. And yeah, it then worked fine after that. Moving up to the eye tracker bar that's between the keyboard and the screen. I don't know, it's kind of gimmicky. I can't really see a really good use for it in game unless you don't have arms. I did try a couple of the free to play eye tracker games, but you still need to use the keyboard in order to give kind of command inputs. You couldn't like wink or blink in order to like trigger a mouse click or anything, or that wasn't present in any of the games that I got to play. One use I could see for it is maybe something like face rig where if you're doing a whole face tracking and eye tracking and you want to animate a character for an avatar or whatever. Other than that, uh, yeah. Game performance. Was it any good? Yes. We played everything from Heroes of the Storm, a bit of Rust, yes. Uh, also played a little bit of Overwatch, but um, I spent the majority of the time playing Doom 2016. My god. The awesome thing is, it does have a full-fledged 1070 in it, but it also ha only has a 1920 by 1080 display, which means it can actually clock really well in a lot of games. I was playing Doom on Ultra, and I was always getting over 120 frames per second. It was actually really good, and getting to play Doom at 120 frames is like... Oh. It's really nice. Really good color fidelity on the screen. Pretty good contrast. As a content creator, I'm a bit of a, a stickler for color. I'd like when I'm trying to do color correcting on video or color grading. I do understand I'm not giving you any benchmarks or stats here, but the thing is we don't have any of our own in-house stats to compare it to because this is our first laptop review. So if we do end up doing more of these, we may actually do some comparisons based on our actual personal rigs that we still run. Another thing, so because it is a full-fledged 1070, a concern you might have is noise and quite quiet. It's actually no more louder than my actual desktop, which has a 960 in it and an older CPU. It is a full-fledged gaming laptop category size. That's its biggest flaw. It's too big and too heavy, and it's not really comfortable as a carry-around daily driver. It really is more in that category of the portable desktop. And personally, I'd probably go for their stealth version, which has a 1060 in it, but a 1060, I reckon, is still good enough for 
editing and content creation as like a t daily work driver for 1080p content on YouTube. And honestly, I'd, I'd really love one of them. Yeah, I'd say it's a positive experience overall. Should you buy it? That's a question for yourself, because it is the mid-tier of their Stealth, Dominator, and then their Titan. Good naming. <laughs> but their Titan grade laptops. Very top tier Titan has dual 1080s in it. It's ridiculous and it's got a mechanical keyboard. Yeah, it is a good mid tier and it does perform very well with all the current games that are on the market. Like honestly, I think Doom is actually a really good standard. It is one of the better graphical fidelity games that came out in 2016, so I think you're good. However, wait until about mid-February 2017 because MSI will be releasing uh, the whole new range of laptops with the seventh generation, Intel's latest generation, so then you'll be getting into the 7000 uh, series. If you're trying to save money, I'd probably wait just for that. Other than that, I'm Justin. Hopefully this was uh, educational enough. Bye! <laughs> and a final note to our subscribers. Uh, let us know in the comments what you thought of this. Is this okay? Would it be okay to do computer reviews every now and again? Because I know a bunch of you are gamers, we're gamers, and, you know, we do use computers a lot.